every reasonable effort has been made to ensure that the content in this video is safe. But as I cannot be in the room with you, the responsibility for participating in any exercise or individual activity rests with you. If you normally modify movements due to injury, pregnancy, physical conditions, please make sure you keep doing so and use pillows, blankets or other objects as props to support your practice. If at any time during this video you feel any unusual pain or discomfort, you should stop exercising immediately. Hello and welcome to this video on shoulder girdle stability and upper back core strength. This video is one in the Introduction to Pilates series. In earlier videos, we've thought about how we use lower abdominal strength to support the lower spine. We've thought about how we use strength around the waist, at the back, the sides and front of the waist, to support the spine in the lumbar region or the back of the waist. And in this video, we're going to concentrate a lot more on how we support the spine, especially through the back of the ribcage, and in some ways, by extension, therefore, the spine in the back of the neck. We'll be working quite a lot with the shoulder blade placement to help us keep the upper back supported. One of the reasons that we, we find it difficult to keep the upper back supported is that when our shoulder blades draw upwards because the muscles between the shoulder blades and the base of the head are tightening, they get a bit stuck here, the muscles get a bit tight and it becomes harder to draw the shoulder blades back down. At the same time, sometimes the muscles between the shoulder blades become a bit slack, so the shoulder blades start to come also wide and forwards, which causes the front of the chest to begin to stoop. And again, the muscles in the front of the chest tend to tighten in this stooped position. So it starts in general to become a lot harder to get this upright position again. And that's fine, but it gradually becomes uncomfortable to be stooped like this. So, First of all, or what will help us with engaging our upper back core strength and working effectively with it, is to loosen and mobilise around the shoulders and the shoulder joints. And that's what we're going to begin to do now. So let's find our neutral spine position. That's back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level. We can think about the fist distance between the chin and the chest, especially if the thumb is downwards like that, that space between the chin and the chest. Then we can engage the pelvic diamond strength and the lower abdomen that was looked at in an earlier video. And we can also engage the strength around the waist at the back and the sides and the front to keep the lumbar spine, the spine and the waist supported. And let's think as well a little bit about our lateral breath so that, again, the breathing is helping us to stay strong in the core muscles and long through the spine. And the lateral breath is the breath, again looked at in an earlier video, where as we breathe in, we're aiming to open the chest to the sides, wider and wider down to the floating ribs, and also back. If we think about opening the space from within the rib cage as we breathe in, that will help us to get that wide breath without the abdomen doming forwards. And as we breathe out, if we breathe from the top of the breath through the nostrils and then out through the back of the mouth, through the throat, then the upper chest, the mid chest and the depth of the chest, we'll feel that helping us to stimulate strength around the rib cage, strength into the waist and even strength into the lower abdomen. So now that we've got the neutral spine aligned and a little bit of core strength working to support it, let's begin to mobilise the shoulder joints. So first of all, as we breathe in, we're going to let the right shoulder, your right shoulder shrug up and then activating the muscles at the back of the shoulder joint, turn the arm out and then just relax it down. So we're going to breathe in to shrug the shoulder up Use the muscles around the shoulder joint to turn the arm out and then releasing down. So the arm can turn from the forearm, the radial joint, or at the shoulder joint. And what we are aiming to do as we rotate the arm out is rather than to do it from the forearm and force it upwards, 
to actually activate the muscles, this little cap of muscles here at the back of the shoulder joint to turn the arm out at the shoulder and then release down. So breathing in and then turning the arm out at the shoulder and release down on the exhalation. Breathing in, breathing out to rotate and to release down. Breathing in to shrug up, breathing out to rotate and to release down. And let's give that one more go to each side. Breathing in to shrug, rotate, arm nice and floppy to help you rotate from the shoulder and release down. Breathing in, arm nice and floppy and rotate at the back of the shoulder and release down. And then relaxing the arm. Then we're going to breathe in and shrug the shoulders up towards the ears, breathing out gently, releasing the shoulders away from the ears, let the collarbones open and widen, the shoulder blades be wide and sinking down the back. And then breathing in to shrug the shoulders up towards the ears, and breathing out to keep the collarbones opening, shoulder blades wide across the back of the ribcage and sinking down the back. As we breathe in, the, the spine will usually lengthen between the tailbone and the crown. As we breathe out, there'll be a tendency for the spine to sink. So keep the pelvic diamond going, keep the belt fastened around the waist to help you keep your spine really tall. So last shrug, breathing in and breathing out to release down, keeping the spine really tall, getting the shoulder blades to sink down the back of the rib cage as far as they will go. And then as you're ready, Let's breathe in to lift the arms up to shoulder height. Exhalation to bring the hands onto the shoulders. Inhalation to widen across the collarbones, through the shoulder joints towards the elbows. Exhalation to bring the arms parallel again to open and to release down. So let's breathe in to bring the arms up to shoulder height, to bring the hands onto the shoulders. Breathe in to widen across the collarbones into the shoulder joints through towards your elbows. And once again, exhaling to come parallel, open and back down. Let's give it another couple of goes. So we're going to breathe in to let the arms come up. Breathe out to bring the hands onto the shoulders. Breathe in to widen away. And then breathing out to come parallel, opening and back down. Last time, breathing in to let the arms lift up. Breathing out to bring the hands onto the shoulders, breathing in to widen and to hold in this widened position. And then here we're going to think in terms of circling the elbows. Let the elbows come a little bit forward of the line of the shoulder joint, a little bit above, a little bit back and a little bit down. And as we're doing this, just check that your rib cage doesn't pop forwards too much and checking that your chin doesn't jut forwards too much as well. Nice free breath here. And then we're going to reverse the circling action. Again, just checking in with the positioning on the ribs and the head and the neck. And through and last time. And then lengthening out, reach into the fingertips. If you're feeling strong enough, we're going to rotate the arms at the shoulder joint, turn down and back on your right arm and up and back on your left arm. And then down and back on your left arm and up and back on your right arm at the shoulder joint. And what also tends to help here is to gently let the head and neck pivot at the end of the length of the neck in each direction, right and then left. Let's go through a last time here and over, bringing the arms into the aligned position and relaxing and softening through the shoulder blades. Let's just a little bit roll through the whole spine so that we've got everything connected and working together, just integrating everything after that little stretch and release section for the shoulders. So starting in the neutral spine position, let's use the pelvic diamond scoop and hollow to begin to roll and round the lower back. Let's squeeze in at the sides of the waist and the front to begin to roll and round the mid back. Then we're going to squeeze the muscles at the base of the breastbone between the ribs to roll and round the upper spine. The abdominal wall is lifting up and back very firmly towards the back. So I'm lifting up to come over, not sinking down. Let's breathe in here 
And once again, as you breathe out, restacking the spine segment by segment, back up towards the crown of the head. Let's breathe in again. And as you're ready, hands can come onto the knees. Scoop and hollow nice and firmly in the lower abdomen, pelvic garland. Sides of the waist squeeze in, avoiding bringing your rib cage and chest down yet. Now squeeze at the base of the breastbone that begins to round the chest forward. Keep lifting the abdominal wall back really powerfully to support your back. Inhalation here. And then we're going to restack the spine, tailbone, sacrum, five vertebrae through the waist, 12 little vertebrae through the rib cage, and seven little vertebrae through the neck into the crown of the head. Let's give it one more go. So the hands just come a little bit forward, scoop and hollow, very powerfully, too powerfully, so that you pull out of neutral into a rounded spine, sides of the waist and the front working, squeeze at the base of the breastbone, breathing in here. And as you unfurl again, you have to release a little bit at the front of the abdomen and begin again to fasten your belt more firmly into the back of your waist little by little, growing up towards the crown of the head. So now in theory, we've come back into neutral spine, back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level, letting the core bones be nice and broad and wide. So we've released the chest a little bit. That should be more possible now if it was harder before. And just thinking about the shoulder blade on each side being positioned in a centered way on that half of the rib cage behind you. So the shoulder blade quite centered in either side of the rib cage. The spine nice and tall. So we're going to a little bit work with the muscles that hold the shoulder blades in this more sunken down the back position and a little bit wide. And to help explain that, I'm going to stand up so that you'll be able to see my upper back and shoulders more clearly. So the shoulder blades at the moment should be, as I was just describing them, in the centre of each side of the rib cage and a little bit downwards. The points of the shoulder blades are directed towards the sitting bones and the sitting bones are directed towards the heels when we're in neutral spine. So it's going to be back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level, this distance shoulder blades wide and moving down the back. And then just to let you see this from behind, I'm going to let my arms lift up and then as I'm ready, I'm going to release the muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade on the right side. So my shoulder blade is drawing around the back of the rib cage and a little bit forwards. And now I'm going to contract the muscle again between the shoulder blade and the spine to replace the shoulder blade into position. And then breathing in, I'm going to release the muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade so that the shoulder blade moves out across the back of the left side of my rib cage and begins to move a little bit forwards. And now I'm going to contract that same muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade to return the arm and my upper back muscles working to support the shoulder blade. And the muscle between the shoulder blades to either side is the rhomboid muscle. Together, the rhomboids, right side, left side. So let's see if we can do the same exercise um, sitting on the chair, ideally, a right angle at the front of the hip joints and a right angle at the back of the knee joints. And if your feet aren't able to rest on the floor, just think about putting uh, a book or if you happen to have a yoga block at home, a yoga block underneath your feet or a nice solid book. Just remember that there's an object there when you're getting up again, so you don't trip over it. So checking again, back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level, this distance. Going to let the arms lift up to shoulder height and let the shoulder blades be drawing down the back and in a nice centre position on either side of the rib cage. So then on your right side, as you breathe in, letting the muscle between the shoulder blade and the spine a little bit stretch so that your shoulder blade begins to move around your rib cage, across the right side of the rib cage and a little bit coming forwards, it's here, and stretching through the back of the upper arm, and now engaging the muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade to return the arm into the shoulder joint to connect over the back of the upper arm to bring the arm back into position. 
and we're aiming to arrive in a position again where we've got lots of space between the ear and the shoulder. So then onto the left side, so releasing the rhomboid muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade, stretching over the back of the shoulder joint, over the back of the arm, staying easy and released on this side of the arm and the front of the chest. And then now as you're ready, letting your shoulder blade move in towards your spine again, keeping it relatively sunken, arm coming back, settling into the shoulder joint and again the space between the ear and the shoulder. So let's let it flow a little bit more. Breathing in to release, breathing out to connect the shoulder blade back towards the spine again and set the arm into the shoulder joint. Breathing in to let go and the muscles in the upper back so the arm can stretch forwards. And once again, contracting the muscles in the, the upper back so the arm is returned. So breathing in to release forward, breathing out to come back. Breathing in to release forward, breathing out to come back. Once more, breathing in to release forward, your shoulder blade travels forward, and then breathing out to return, shoulder blade placed in the upper back. Breathing in to release forward, breathing out to contract between the shoulder blade and the spine. Feel the arm firmly settle into the shoulder joint again, shoulder blades wide and drawing down the back, and your upper back able to be quite tall because of the position that the shoulder blades are in and the muscles around the shoulder blades. So that's our first exercise and let's come back to a very similar exercise but working with two arms. So instead of the arms being in line all the way through with the shoulder joints we're just going to let the fingertips sway towards each other and again letting the collarbones be quite open shoulder blade starting wide to either side of the spine and down the back and then let's breathe in to stretch the shoulder blade simultaneously on the right side and the left side away from the spine and of course the shoulder blades attached to the muscles through the back of the upper arm so feeling those muscles also lengthening as you reach forward and then we're going to draw the shoulder blades back centering them to either side of the spine in the centre of each side of the ribcage, shoulders nice and strong again. So breathing in, releasing, and then once again breathing out to set the shoulder blades and to check in with our neutral spine position. Now it could be, as you come back, if you're feeling both arms nice and strongly set into the shoulder joints, that you can keep that sense of strength from behind, keep opening across the collarbones, Keep lengthening through the insides of the arms and the biceps and open the arms to the sides, feeling the weight of your arms mainly held in the upper back between your shoulder blades and across the breadth of your, the back of your shoulders. So this also can be a little bit faster. So breathing in to stretch, breathing out to engage the muscles to either side of the spine and retract the shoulder blades again, feel the arms connect into the shoulder joints, continue with that strength to widen the arms. So your arms are moving out, connected into your back like wings almost. And then breathing in to come forwards again, breathing in, breathing out to connect. And then once again, keeping that connection. So the power of the opening is across here and here. So connecting and wide. Let's do one more. Breathing in, releasing the shoulder blades, let them move forwards, drawing the shoulder blades back in towards the spine and down the back and opening really wide. And lift this time, let's just relax the arms down. So these exercises are really quite tiring if you're getting the muscles to work across the upper back and into the back of the shoulder joint so that Instead of the muscles being slack like that, they're really strong and lifting your arms up into your shoulders so the weight of the arms doesn't drag you forward. It will be quite hard work to strengthen those muscles. So it <laughs> might look as though it should be easy, but actually, like most Pilates exercises, however it looks on the outside, deep within the muscles that support the bone structure of the body, it's very hard work. And sometimes that's why the, the movements in Pilates look easy because they're not great big movements like we're often used to making in exercise. 
They're the muscles that are working close to the bones, giving us a really foundational support to our movement. The bones essentially structure our shape and the muscles closest to the bones are the most foundational muscles in our movement patterns. And so they often are not creating huge shapes. This is quite a big shape, but the work is back here rather than at the end of the movement in the fingertips. It's really intense to the back of the shoulders and close to the spine in the back of the rib cage. Another exercise that, again, is related to these two exercises is the scissor arms. And if you come back into this position where we've got back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head, level, fist distance, so our neutral spine position, right angles at the front of the hip joints, back of the knee joints, pelvic diamond working in the lower abdomen, imaginary belt strength engaging in the muscles of the midsection. Then we're going to just let the arms come forward again. Let's say the right arm releases forward. So you feel that little bit of a stretch across the upper back. And then again, resetting the arm into the shoulder joint, breathing in on the other side and breathing out to set. And this time, instead of taking the arm out to the side, seeing if you can draw it upwards, using the muscle between the shoulder blade and the spine, to keep the shoulder blade anchored down the back and returning. What often happens when the arm goes up is that the shoulder blade just rides up with the arm so that this all becomes quite squashed. The weight of the shoulder, the shoulder blade is about here, the weight, and so this, the weight of the shoulder blade squashes this down. But we are aiming to try and keep some power in the back of the upper arm so that we could throw something if we needed to. It's that, that strength that you need from behind, so throwing not just from the hand and the forearm, it's from really pressing from the back, or if you want to, to hit with a racket, again, you need this from behind, you need this strength into your upper back and the back of your shoulder, not just <laughs> not really going to do it. So collarbone is nice and broad and wide and the shoulder blades down the back, and then just releasing the shoulder blade and the muscles over the back of the upper arm and then resetting that strength and then quickly, as quickly as you can, keep holding the muscle that just drew the shoulder blade back into, space, into place as you let the arm lift up. So you keep the shoulder blade anchored with the muscle just here. And usually the arm doesn't go all the way up when we're using that anchoring action. So again, we release from behind on the left side now, connect, keep the shoulder blade moving moving down the back or staying in position, using the muscle between the spine and the shoulder blade to keep it in position, breathing in to come back. So continue it in, in the seated position and I'll just see if I can show it to you again from the standing. So releasing as you breathe in on your right side, let the arm moves forward and then connecting back. And then it's the muscle here that connects and I keep contracting between the shoulder blade and the spine as I release the arm upwards so that my shoulder blade stays in position and coming back down. So breathing in to release the arm forward and then the muscle here between the shoulder blade and the spine is working. I keep it working, keep it working so that my shoulder blade doesn't ride upwards. If I were to let go here, the shoulder blade would lift the way I showed before where it causes the front of the chest to collapse a little bit. And then let's say you've got a little bit used to it now, and then you could just connect the shoulder blades into position, let one arm lift and return. One arm lift and return, lift and return. Last time, lift and return and releasing. And so again, you should probably be able to feel that you're quite tall and released in the upper back here. So these exercises that we've been looking at can be practiced in seated the way we've been doing them or in standing or they can also be practiced lying down and some of them lying down on the back but some of them are also practiced lying on the side and let's just very quickly look at when we're in neutral spine lying on the floor how we would have the shoulder blades positioned so that our upper back core stability is in place. So this is 
just to give you an idea, lying on the back with that two fist distance between the feet, fist and a half distance between the knees, the pelvis balance to the right side and the left side, you can lift the ribs up, legs from the waist out of the hips, bring the ribs down, balance the weight back side, left side, support the head with the hands, lengthen the neck from between the shoulder blades, and then thinking about finding the neutral spine. So the base of the tailbone directs to between the heels, as if you've got a little spotlight on the base of the spine shining to between your heels. The crests of the hip bones are directly towards the ceiling. A little bit of space between the spine and the mat at the sacrum where the hips and the spine join and through the back of the waist. The spine through the back of the rib cage in contact with the mat, fist distance between the chin and the chest. And then ideally your shoulder blades will be wide to either side of the spine, positioned in the centre of each side of your ribcage. And then with all the movements and practices you're doing, if your upper back core strength is engaged like this, even if it might on the outside look passive, it will actually increase your strength in all of your Pilates exercises from beginner's level right the way through too advanced. And as I said before, these scissor exercises could work here. And then we just have to be very careful when we're working with the upper body that we're not allowing the small of the back and the base of the ribcage to ping off the floor as the weight of the arm goes back. So there's quite a lot of challenge around the waist and between the ribs at the base of the breastbone, as well as for your upper back here. And, and then the exercise would look pretty much like that. And we can also do this one and widen out to the side. Breathing in and breathing out widen. So that's quickly to look at shoulder girdle stability lying on the back. Let's think about the shoulder girdle stability lying on the side as I would come down, pelvic diamond lower abdominal strength in place, imaginary belt fastened, coming all the way through. So then hips stacked above hip, shoulder above shoulder, back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level. And then pelvic diamond engaging, waist strength fastening, so we've got a little bit of space under here. And then what often happens when people are working on the side is that they forget all about the shoulder girdle stability and the upper back strength. But when we can again place our shoulder blades wide to either side of the spine and the rib cage, and draw them down the back in fist distance, and you feel the collarbones nice and broad and wide and your ribs a little bit supported, this will make a lot of difference to the exercises. And then there's an exercise that gets performed lying on the side where you raise your arm, raise your arm, and then you carry it in your upper back strength to go back into a twist and come back. We won't do that now, but again, uh, that same position is used there in the, the side line. Also in the prone, lying on the front, as we come down, just letting your spine be nice and long, pelvic diamond, navel pulling to the spine, fastening the belt to the back, the sides in the front, letting the breastbone and the spine move towards each other and keep using the muscles at the base of the breastbone to squeeze the base of your ribcage in. Here, to be in neutral, once again back of hips, back of shoulders, back of head level, little spotlight on the tailbone directed to the heels, crests of the hip bones shining directly into the floor and the midsection strength, pelvic diamond, and the waist strength working to keep the pelvis really aligned and a little bit of lift, you know, to keep the small of the back away from the mat. And then here, often the arms are placed in a letter E shape to either side of the head, in which case again, shoulder blades wide and moving down the back. And the strength in the upper back that we were just working with is what lifts the body away from the floor rather than a push into the arms. It's that upper back strength. Sometimes the arms are more in this diamond shape, 
and again, shoulder blades wide and moving down the back, lengthening the spine from between the shoulder blades. But even when we're in exercises where the upper body is relaxed, and actually the exercise is about using the leg a little bit, we're still aiming to, what tends to happen is people let the shoulder blades ride up the back with effort, but it's not helping the upper back posture and ultimately it's not helping your strength in the prone. If you can keep your shoulder blades wide and moving down the back and of course the core strength working around your rib cage, and around your waist and in your pelvic diamond and then to activate a movement like this you'd have to be using lower back strength and gluteal strength but it's an awful lot stronger and more effective if you keep your upper back stability in place. So these are all the places in which in the general Pilates practice we might be seeing as a matter of course our upper back core strength in position. Of course for our everyday lives having upper back core strength to support our upper spines to help us re-strengthen after we might have spent a long time um, at desks or computers or doing fine work with the hands um, is very useful to keep our posture comfortable and to enable free mobile movement as well. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been a helpful video and see you again soon.